This is a continuation of a Redstone Trainer demonstration conducted on 17 December 1959 at the Redstone Division, Department of Materiel, United States Army Artillery and Missile School, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Redstone Division instructor personnel are preparing the aft unit for mating with the warhead unit to create the missile body. Sergeant First Class Gene R. Dollahide, seen here, was the non-commissioned officer in charge of this phase of the mating operation. The warhead unit resting on the warhead trailer will now be back down for mating with the aft unit. The aft unit is suspended by the rigging attached to the lightweight erector servicer A-frame. The aft unit will now be connected to the warhead with eight non-destructive bolts. The completed missile body, now resting on the warhead trailer, will be mated to the missile thrust unit. For this operation, the thrust unit was now suspended from the A-frame rigging. The two sections were aligned for mating with the use of six ball and socket guide pins. The two missile units were then mated by threading six explosive bolts through the six guide pins. The completed missile is now supported by the warhead trailer and the A-frame rigging. The Redstone Trainer operation was conducted in a restricted area on the tarmac of the post airfield just outside the Redstone Division hangar seen in the background. The rotating frame assembly known as the tilt ring is attached to the base of the four fins of the thrust unit. The tilt ring will now be attached to its two pivot points located on the launcher. Here the crew is attaching the drop tank to the side of the missile. The drop tank provided constant temperature heating and cooling to the instrument compartment prior to launch. The drop tank was packed with dry ice to provide cooling air to the compartment. Electrical heater circuits in the tank provided warm air. The missile is now being raised to its vertical firing position with the use of the Erector Servicer lightweight H-frame and A-frame equipment. A 10-ton capacity winch located on the bed of the 2.5-ton Erector Servicer truck pulls a cable attached to the top of the A-frame. The rotating A-frame in turn pulls the missile to the vertical position with the use of two cables attached from the top of the A-frame to the side of the missile. Note the four carbon jet vanes mounted just under the rocket engine exhaust nozzle. The jet vanes were used for initial steering at liftoff. Just prior to the missile rotating through its center of gravity position, the tilt ring will be engaged by two hydraulic pistons. The pistons prevent the missile from tumbling over. Hydraulic pressure is slowly bled off to allow the missile to settle to its full upright position. Next, four steering rudders will be attached to the four thrust unit fins. The steering rudders are mechanically geared to the carbon jet vanes, and they act in unison. The rudders take over attitude control of the missile during powered flight once sufficient velocity is obtained. Here the fueling ladder is being positioned on the thrust unit. In this demonstration the crew will simulate the loading of 25,000 pounds of liquid oxygen or LOX into the thrust unit oxidizer tank. The crew is installing the LOX tank overflow standpipe. When the LOX tank is full, excess LOX will flow out the LOX vent valve and down the standpipe to the ground. Here the LOX fill and drain valve is being attached to the LOX port on the side of the thrust unit. Next, a LOX hose will be connected from the fueling ladder to the LOX fill and drain valve. 
This is a liquid oxygen tanker trailer containing 18,000 pounds of liquid oxygen. Normally two LOX hoses are connected from two LOX tankers to the LOX Y fitting seen here. In this demonstration only one tanker is utilized. LOX is now being pumped into the missile's oxidizer tank. The boiling point of liquid oxygen is minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. The extremely low temperature of liquid oxygen causes a frost band to form around the exterior circumference of the oxidizer tank. During LOX loading, all LOX hose fittings are constantly checked for tightness. Once the LOX tank is full, the tanker trailer pumps are turned off. All LOX hoses are then disconnected and drained onto the ground.